Hello everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my full review of the Sony Alpha SLT A55. Now I've been using the A55 for around about a week now and I've received so many questions that in this review I hope to answer as many as I can. If you want to see what you get in the box for your money then please check out my earlier video on the Geekanoids channel. Now before I share my experiences and opinion here is a quick rundown of the specifications. The A55 is Sony's new feature SLT camera. Now it's like a digital SLR but instead of the mirror moving inside when you press the shutter it stays still. It is semi-translucent so you can actually see the sensor through it and this enables one of the biggest features which is 10 frames per second continuous shooting. The body is smaller than an SLR as well so it makes it a lot more bag friendly and a lot lighter to carry around. Now you get 16.2 megapixel photos. You've also got a direct movie button here because this camera is capable of capturing 1080i video and the processor inside uh, is a Bions processor with dual noise reduction. You get up to 12,800 ISO. On the back you can see here I've got the screen facing inwards this is a 3 inch screen, 16.9 format, super high res and it rotates to various angles so great for taking sort of low level shots and, and getting some really interesting angles in your photos and as I showed you just a, a short while ago when not in use you can fold it back onto the camera body so it protects the screen so that's really nice. Now the viewfinder just here this is an electronic viewfinder uh, again high res and it gives you a hundred percent field of view plus little clue around the side here GPS this camera has got GPS built in so it actually tags your images with location information now I've got the VL kit you can see a lens on the camera body here this is an 18 to 55 SAM lens uh, it feels cheap plasticky lens but it does perform very well and it didn't add a lot on to the actual cost of the, the kit so enough said about the, the lens really you can do a lot better but for an extra £50 you may as well get the 18 to 55 kit so now let's deal with the layout of the controls and the ergonomics now let me walk you through the controls very quickly we've got a mode dial on the top left here and we can scroll this round from auto to auto plus program mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual at 10 frames per second mode, panoramic feature which I'm going to show you later on this allows you to take sweep panorama photos, scene modes and no flash so it won't trigger the built-in flash. Also on this top left hand side we've got a menu button which gains you access to the menus. I'm going to show you that again in a short while. Just on this side of the camera at the top at the very front we've got the on off switch which rotates round to the on position or again round to the off position and this shrouds the shutter button which you press for taking photos we've got a D range button here which is used for gaining access to the HDR feature of the camera find an LCD button to switch between the uh, electronic viewfinder and the LCD, LCD's live view on the back that direct movie mode button and then we've got exposure compensation, exposure lock buttons. Round the back we've got the 3 inch screen which I'm going to show you in action a little bit later on. Function button, 4 way rocker, AF button in the middle which also acts as an OK button. A little bit confusing that one. And this 4 way rock, rocker also gives you access to ISO settings, timer settings, display settings and white balance. Playback button and a trash can. This side of the camera is completely blank. This side of the camera we have got a uh, little input here for remote functionality of the camera. Ka -ching. We've also got a little cover here for an external mic. Absolutely superb they include that so I can use my Sennheiser mic with this. And then this last flap here HDMI and USB connections. Round the side of the camera just here autofocus and manual focus switch lens release button, uh, the flash button for the pop-up flash, I'll show you that when the camera is switched on, around this side just underneath the lens depth of field preview button, so you get an idea of 
whether you're going to blur the background out on your photos actually shown in the live view superb feature there IR receiver there for if you're using an IR remote little scrolly wheel there for scrolling through your menu options and then let's have a look at the grip the grip is a nice size I've got medium size hands so it feels really nice in the hand for me my little finger does fall off the bottom of the camera there so if you've got large hands this might not be the camera for you but I've certainly found it extremely comfy in this sort of position uh, so that is really just a personal preference best to try it if you've got large hands though around the bottom of the camera we've got the tripod mounting socket there and then we've got the battery door and memory card slot just under there this is one of the negative points having this on the bottom of the camera if you have got a wide mount for your tripod then you would have to remove it from the tripod to put a new memory card in if you run out or if you run out of battery power but most tripods use a square type attachment here certainly mine does and I can still gain access to this so it's not a deal breaker so now let's have a look at the screen and menus and I could have made a whole separate video on this so I'm gonna go through this quite fast the menu system is very well laid out easy to find and configure let's just have a look through the options we're in menu system number one here we can control the image size aspect ratio image quality let's just dive into image quality we've got an option of fine and standard or RAW and RAW plus JPEG. File format for the videos is set to AVC HD and the movie size in this format is locked to 1920 by 1080. If I switch it around to MP4, I can choose either 1440 by 1080 or VGA. Let's pop it back onto AVC HD because that's my preferred format. Movie audio records on, steady shots on. Now I can either push right here or I can continue down and it will jump to menu number two. And here I've got some options for panorama size, direction, 3D pan image size and 3D pan direction. They're greyed out at the moment because I'm not in the panorama mode. Flash control, ADI flash. I've got the option of pre-flash TTL as well. AF illuminator and colour space options. Across to the settings menu number one, we've got iStar AF, finder LCD setting, auto exposure lock, hold button, focus hold button, focus magnifier, red eye reduction and release without lens. Number two we've got grid line off at the moment, histogram settings, display record data, auto review and then a couple of those greyed out of the bottom because they're not available in my particular setting for auto plus continuous advance and auto plus image extract. We've got some playback options as well and another setting for playback options then we've got some card options for formatting and how the files are going to be named or numbered. And then we've got some date and time settings and also area settings as well. And it's in the area settings that you can select your particular area. And across to this last menu we've got LCD brightness, viewfinder brightness, GPS settings, power save settings, control for HDMI, language and help guide. And then the last one, USB connection, audio signals, cleaning mode, version, demo mode, and reset to default settings. So a lot of options there in the menus. Sorry, I haven't got time to go into all of them. Let's press playback on this screen, and we can see this marvellous screen. It is great for reviewing your photos and videos. Great colours, nice and bright, and very clear. It performs extremely well in the live view mode too. The EVF, although I'm not going to be able to show you this on the video, is very bright as well. Excellent if you're outside shooting in bright light. Now I just want to cover off some of the features that I've really enjoyed using with the A55. Now it uses steady shot, so you get optical image stabilisation in the body of the camera. And this means that all the lenses you use benefit from it and it works extremely well. The sweep panorama mode is awesome. It makes taking panoramic extra wide photos a breeze. And the auto HDR mode impressed me too, where the A55 takes three images in quick succession at different exposures and then combines them into a single image with a fantastic dynamic range. There's a similar feature called twilight mode that combines six low light photos to reduce noise. The most impressive for me is the 10 frames per second continuous shooting which is great for sport and action shots. 
It performed superbly and the speed and number of in-focus photos really impressed me. The full HD video is the icing on the cake and you would have seen in one of my other videos some HD video footage and I'm sure you'll agree the Sony A55 performs extremely well. This little camera costs around £700 with the 18-55mm to lens. It's staying with me in my arsenal of equipment. Absolutely love it and I can highly recommend it. Well thanks very much for listening. This was my review of the Sony Alpha A55. Please do subscribe to the Geek and Noise channel so you don't miss out on any of my future video reviews. This video is sponsored by MyMemory.com. For great prices, fast delivery and reliable customer support, visit MyMemory.com.